Hi there, folks. I'm Mike Morales here in Southern California. You are watching and listening to Sipping Off the Cuff on Tequila Aficionado Media on all of our channels, networks, and social media. Uh, I'm here, again, like I say, in SoCal. That guy out there is... Newport News, Virginia, and I'm Dave Dinius. That's it. That's... that's oh, we call him Sonny. <laughs> no, we don't. <laughs> Dave and I uh, had a really fun time dissecting Mala Vida Blanco. Mala Vida Blanco. Yeah. Oh, that's empty. <laughs> this is this is the, the reposado uh, of Mala Vida. If you've heard of Mala Vida before, um, we, did bit, right we did a little bit more delving into it. Um, this is the brand that is owned by the drummer for Mana, who is a famous group. It's a, it's a, it's, I know they're, they're a Latin group. Um, Latin pop. Latin pop, but they're famous all over the world. Okay. Uh, probably more famous than the Backstreet Boys were. But <laughs> anyway, I know they got a bigger fan base now. Um, so anyway, this is this belongs to a, a, a gentleman by the name of Alex Gonzalez, who is the yes. drummer. And they put it out some really interesting points on this bottle. We, we didn't cover the packaging so much, but, you know, it's really over the top. So we had to nominate it for Brand of Promise and Packaging. Um, yeah, it's got a skull at the bottom. I don't know if you all folks can see that. You probably see it on Dave's better than you can on mine. Um, he's got... He's got, he's got uh, skull... Did you say he's got these are drumsticks? Those are drumsticks. Oh my gosh. Because he's a drummer. He's a drummer. And then Dave took off camera, he took out a, a, a magnifying glass and started guy. looking at the detail on this skull. Uh, he's got Malavitas on, uh, written on the skull in the back, and it's uh, the, the bottle has here. Yeah, the this is a nice. Eyeballs. This is all embossed, too. Yeah, it's very tactile. Um, I'm not sure what the roses are for. Does he have like a tattoo of roses or something? Uh, he might. I don't know. Because even the eyes of the skull, look at the eyes of roses. So obviously this this has to do with, uh, you know, Day of the Dead. Okay. So um, do we know how old, how long this is being aged? It is being aged, they say, for four months in... American and French oak barrels. Oh, so it's a blend, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, and that's why I'm going to use my handy dandy Glencairn. Uh, that explains why it looks a little bit darker. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Okay. This is the second time that we, you and I, have looked at a, at a tequila that was uh, that had a blend uh, of of two different barrels, which is the thing now. Apparently, yeah. it's a it's a, it's a way to distinguish. It's a trend, and it's a good trend. I I like it because it adds. I know, a I know some of them are blending different ages too. So yeah. yeah, but this one's got a pretty color, and and it's. Do we know that? Are they making an añejo yet? Do you know that? It is showing on the website añejo. It shows that they have it available in California. But we did not get it. No. No, and that's okay because I'm looking at this reposado like it's gonna it's gonna come across like an añejo. Beautiful <laughs> legs and tears. Look at that. I don't think it's as dark as some of the ones we've had. Like the yeah, I we had a couple that. recently that were pretty dark, and and it, you may have seen the uh, the ca um, uh, review that we did, and and you'll you'll probably see rooster rojo in May as well. Yeah. Um, Nice legs and tears, though, bro. Nice legs and tears. I think it's actually a little bit better than, than the, the Blanco. Blanco. Yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, again, there's the barrels that have been recharged or reused. There, there's, you're going to get a little bit of that, that re residual glycerin, whether it's natural or whatever. Um, but it's visually attractive. I love the color on it. I'm going to put my schnoz in it. Yeah, all right. Oh, there it is. You know what? It's not losing the brightness that we no. had on Blanco nose. Did you notice that? I got yeah. more got it than I got wood. Yeah, I'd say so. It doesn't. It doesn't taper off like nope. some of them have. 
Yeah, sometimes the wood overpowers the the, the smell of the of the brightness of the yeah, agave. It's really bright. Yeah, this this is almost like there's almost no difference. I mean, no, it's fine. It's it's fine. Yeah, but maybe if it opens up, I'm going to get more wood because I'm not. Uh, there's a sweetness in there that's that not in the blanco, which I'm going to assume is maybe the French oak. Maybe. Uh, maybe who knows? I wonder if they're using whiskey barrels. I'm sure they are. You think? Yeah, yeah. It, 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 we talked about uh, if you watch the Blanco uh, review, uh, it's a very small distillery. A handful of brands come out of there. Yep. I mean, literally a handful. Yep. And yeah, well, so it's missing a finger. And uh, <laughs> um, I'm, I'm. You know what? The citrus turned into orange. I'm getting orange blossom instead of we were getting le lime or lemon, you know? Yeah, lime and grapefruit on the anejo. Yeah, that's it. That's or it. blanco. Sorry. But now it's 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 kind of inching its way into like an orange. Um, Which I'm sure that's influenced by the wood. Yeah, it has to be. This is lovely. No alcohol. I, I can't discern. We just broke the seal on these. We, before yeah, we, we did. Uh, I mean, we, didn't, we I had to fight mine to get it out of the box. I will tell you right now, if you get it in the box, plan to take 20 minutes to carefully remove it because it's going to take you that long or you'll break the box or you'll break your bottle. Don't do it. My, my box actually came in a little, had a little relief on it. Oh, uh, you're good. Yeah. And the, the funny thing is they came really professionally wrapped. It was the best wrapped job I've ever seen. I yeah, I wasn't expecting anything like that. I think it was just the bottle, since they were laying down, the weight of the bottle and bouncing in a truck. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, and the, the wood isn't as uh, heavy, so it's a, it's kind of a light. No, it's a very light wood. Yeah, I don't even, it's like a composite wood or something. I mean, you know, it's uh, it, it's nice to see, but it's probably a, uh, the packaging isn't, isn't, is more cost effective to go that route with a lighter wood than it would be to go some of the heavier, you know, the heavy display woods like, yeah, like Veneno. Like they, Veneno, yeah, that Veneno, thing's heavy. They went, they went hog wild with their box. <laughs> it weighs a ton. I love this. The, the nose is beautiful. Yeah, it is. Um, I'm still not getting a whole lot of wood, though. I, I don't know if it's because it's not opening up or it's just, and not that that's a bad thing. I'm not getting it either. Yeah. Uh, we I enjoy tequila's from Marandas, believe me, that's where this distillery <laughs> is. So, yes, well, let's dive in. Okay, let's let's taste this thing and see if see what we what we get. I definitely get some wood influence there. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I don't think the finish is quite as long as the blanco. It's gonna, it's gonna take me. It's, it's spicier. It is spicier. Yeah, the the pepper has turned into like a, like a very light cinnamon spice. Okay, there's not a whole lot of wood influence on this. It's just, it's just enough to round out the edges. Yeah, of it's the blanco. influence. It's not saturation or anything. So yeah, no, I, I think. I think it added another layer of the complexity. Yeah. But but it but you know what I love is it is presenting the the agave in the from the blanco. Um had they let it age maybe another couple of months, it would be more barrel and less agave cuz the the nose on the agave was almost like almost identical to the blanco. Yeah. But it's definitely a different and you know what, Dave? For a for a, a blend wow. of French and American white oak, there's not a lot of French oak sweetness that we got in some of the previous uh, brands. No, I get a little of the dryness that I'm that I've been getting. See, yeah, you pick up the dryness. That's it. Yeah, yeah, because you said the finish the finish wasn't as long as a blanco, but it yeah. is drier because the, yes. the, the blanco has a medium to long finish. This one is a dry finish. <clears throat> You're right. God, you're good at that, man. You should. You should. You should, you should be a catador. Catch <laughs> on, I think. Now you see, and 
I think it's one of those where you really have to let it bloom for you. Because now that I've had a little bit more, I'm getting more of the wood influence on it. But but it's not overpowering. It's yeah, it's by not any means. No, uh, some of the ones that we had that we enjoyed had more of an overpowering uh, um, uh, nose to them. And not not overpowering. It's just more presence, uh, more aggressive nose than this one is. Is I think the rooster was that like that. Yeah. Rooster and Ka were both a little bit more aggressive on the nose. This one is more laid back, mm -hmm. um, but it's there. But it, but I, I, I like it because I, I see where they went with it. They wanted to present. They wanted the wood to present the the qualities of the agave and the bronze, right. similar to like G four, you know, where where Felipe Camarena uses the oldest barrels he can find because. <laughs> He's he's very proud of his agave. So he is, and that's very, that's really an old agavero. That's a you know the old tequileros who are who are agaveros as well. They go that route because they know the quality of their of their plants, and they don't want it to be drowned out. Uh, like he says, you know, we're not we're making tequila, we're not making whiskey. So <laughs> you know, and I think these folks, I think this distillery follows the same the same. Um, uh, the same priorities, the same paradigm. You yeah. Know? Yeah, and I think there's starting to be more and more distilleries that are kind of going that route. It seems that They're way. Catching on a little bit. <laughs> well, you know, they're they're especially. Uh, I, I don't know how. I don't know anything about this distillery. Uh, there, there's. I've not heard of any information. It's really small. Which to me is always a, a, a decent indicator. Again, not so much an indicator on quality because I've had some, I've had some dogs from a distillery <laughs> that was considered small to midsize. Right. And and you know you would expect more character from what we were tasting, and there wasn't. So sometimes the distiller wants to give what the client wants. And just to recap, NOM 1588. Right, tequilas El Mexicano, out of Arandas. So yeah, uh, El Mexicano. For those of you who may have seen that tequila, I think it is available in Southern California. I have seen it. Uh, that's I guess that's their flagship. I would love to taste that flagship. Uh, I've not been able to get to get around to it. Yeah. Um, but I bet it's 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 old school. But but I like that they're using that it's old school Highland style. You know, uh, it's not Lowlands or a Matitan, not, not El Valle, uh, because the nose, I said the nose on the Blanco reminded me of tequilas from a Totonilco because mm -hmm. they were brighter and fruitier and, and more floral. Right. This one is kind of like in between because it smells like one from a Totonilco, <laughs> but mid palate, like I said, Aranda shows up and then I know exactly what neighborhood I'm in, you know? <laughs> I, I love this. The, 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 the citrus turned into orange yeah. because of the wood. I'm willing to it's bet. Still got that nice spiciness, though, that was in the, the Blanco. Yeah. It's great. Um, in fact, in, in the, I forgot to mention this in the Blanco. I almost, at the first intake, got a little bit of that anise that I, I like tasting. But I normally, I normally get that from like tequilas from Matitan where you get some some anise uh, a little bit of, like licorice kind of like just a just a slight aftertaste but it's, <laughs> it, it was so fleeting that you know I couldn't even I, I, I it probably wasn't even worth mentioning but this one you know Alex Gonzalez he's <laughs> onto something yeah, I think I, so I think again we were talking about celebrity brands uh, off camera this is a this is a, a legit Celebrity brand, an international band. Uh, the drum. The, he's a drummer for Mana. Yeah. Uh, which is huge all over the world. De la Tierra. Yeah, I'm. I'm not. Again, I'm not a fan. I don't follow that. Them. Uh, I probably should. I, I'm <laughs> just. You know. Uh, there, there's so many that are coming out. You know. And and this is one that you. I think. This is one that deserves to be uh, uh, followed and endorsed by not only our people, yeah, but Dave's people, and uh, and you know fans of celebrity brands, 
Uh, this one kicks some major ass. That's all a lot I got to say. Better than a couple of the other celebrity brands. Yeah, you know, and we won't go mentioning those folks, you know. <laughs> mm. Mm. Uh, <clears throat> looks like our price point's around 55 bucks. That's dirt cheap. So, that's they, uh, you know what? I'm. I would love to see the the añejo if it's if it's possible because I, I would like to see what they did with that agave. Yeah. In the añejo. You yes. know, did, did, does that uh, does that an añejo again present the agave the way it should be, or is it or is it leaning more toward barrel? I, I don't know. This reposado, I think it's great on its own. I think it's great on on um, uh, it probably really good in a cocktail. I, I think it's bold enough and dry enough that I could pair it with a cigar, um, and it won't get lost. I think I think the quality's there. Uh, I don't know, Dave. What what would you do with it? <laughs> I just sip it. Yep. See. I call me old fashioned. I just sip it. Oh, it might even work in an old fashioned. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. You know. Maybe. I don't even. I don't even think that it requires an anejo. I just want to. I'm just curious to see what the what the what the progression is with this flavor profile, and and there was a lot of thought that went into this. Uh, I I've never met Alex. I don't know what he's like. I haven't spoken to him or anybody involved with Mana. I know that it, this brand's been around for what a couple of years, not even five years. I think. I don't. I don't know how long they've been around. That I haven't seen. So. I have heard about them. You know, I heard about them in the last couple of years. A lot of people in L.A. were telling me about it. And can you, can we get it? And, you know, you should follow them. And and we have so many brands that we follow that when, when somebody mentions a, a, a band that has a tequila, you know, I, I just kind of put them to the side. And yeah. uh, this one is not to be placed on the side. This one, this one should be placed on your shelf. Okay. Uh, wow. On their, web, on their website too, they got uh, some merchandising. Yeah, really? yeah. Grand <laughs> Prompt's nominee. Now, see, now that I've had more of uh, a couple of sips, it it really does linger on your palate. But it's that, and, and uh, like you say, it's the dryness and the French oak that begins to linger. But it's not it's not noticeable at the beginning. Yeah, it is. It is. The longer you take time with it, the more it builds up on your palate, just naturally, because that's what it does. That's that's French oak. That's what it. That's what it'll do. Maybe we can get them to get the anejo to us, and maybe a T-shirt or a hat, because those things are killer. <laughs> <all time. laughs> do they have bandanas? I, I'm not on the website, so I have no idea. Do uh, they have bandanas, because that skull head would go a long way as a. <laughs> I don't see bandanas, but I'm not looking at everything. I don't think got t-shirts, hat, uh, <laughs> a, a, flask, a couple, a couple short shot glasses. So. Uh, yeah, just what I want. Another shot glass. <laughs> yeah, do they have a Glen Cairn? Yeah, you know, give me a Glen Cairn. I, I, you know, a branded <laughs> Glen Cairn. I'll do that. Okay. Um, but anyway, that that's our take on on on, on Mala Vida. And you know what? Again. The names, the name belies the brand, okay? It's yes. just flash, but I, I got to tell you, this is a substantial tequila. Mad it's, Life. Yeah, so. Mad Life, Mala Vida. Uh, for those of you who, who are uh, of Latin descent or, or know about Mana and you like tequila, this is one that you can really proudly buy and endorse yeah. and not worry about, you know, oh, look at that. I didn't even notice it's got bubbles, man. Got bubbles? It's got champagne bubbles. Look at that. Oh, boy. <laughs> you know how I love bubbles, man. Yeah, I know how you love them bubbles. I love them bubbles. So that's our take on Mala Vida Reposado. If we ever get the Añejo, then you, believe me, you, me, and Dave, you, me, and Dave, that means you, our public, will be the first ones to taste it with us. Because, uh, <laughs> In fact, if you're watching us on YouTube or if you're listening to us on the, on the podcast, so like iPod, um, if you've had it, shoot us an email, or yeah. or if you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe, hit the notification bell, uh, yeah. follow Dave on Instagram, follow it's us on TA on that. Instagram, uh, you know, and we're everywhere, folks. Yep. And whatever you do, tomar sabiamente. Sip wisely. <laughs>